Welcome back to NFL Imperialism. Spin the wheel and arrow for selection and direction and attack or expand until one NFL team controls all land. Today's episode, we are following in the true footsteps of the NFL as we look towards their main goal, global domination. Every corner of this flat earth will be occupied by an NFL team until one controls not just the United States, but the entire world. Now, we have quite a bit to go over for this intro, including power-ups and some changes, but if you would rather jump straight into the action, you can skip to this time right here. Well, I'm glad you stayed, because we have a lot to go over, including today's power-ups, in which we have six of them. That includes Afterlife, Double Trouble, Clone, Rewind, Evolved, and Bandit. Now, since the map today has a total of 76 countries, there will be more unclaimed territories, which is why I'll be placing two of each of these power-ups on the map, making a total of 12 placed. Speaking of the map, let's look at it more in depth. You might notice these bold black lines connecting land areas. These signal that a team can attack over bodies of water in respect of these lines. And for the first time since episode 5, disasters return. These are events that occur every time 8 teams are eliminating, starting with Dead Rising, then we have Tornado, and then a new one, which is Meteor Shower. And one more thing, for the Imperialism leaderboards shown at the end of each episode, I decided to change expansions to be worth 5 Imperialism points instead of 10. Oh, and of course, players Stealing is on, and so is the free agent player pool, which gives each team one player per expansion. Now we can finally begin with the first step of this video. Alright, our first act of matter is placing the teams. As you can see right here, we have a list of items. This is list number one, and it includes every single NFL team starting from the Niners down to the Vikings. But there also is a second list starting from Greenland and ending on New Zealand, and what it's going to do, it's going to take every single NFL team and assign it to a separate country. So now we will just click this button and generate our combinations. And what you can see happened is that we have an NFL team, and then we have a country next to it. So that means, for example, the Detroit Lions will be on Iraq. And I'm not going to read out every single one of these, but I will let you just look at it yourself. As you can see, Dolphins are going to India. Oh, how ironic. The Patriots take control of the United States of America. But yeah, it's just kind of crazy to go through this. You can see the wide variety of countries we have, but now we go towards the bottom and you can see we have a lot of countries which don't have a team. These are the countries which will be empty territories, meaning that power-ups can be placed in all these countries right here. Well, after an hour of placing all the teams on the map, all I can say is, wow, this is just completely completely surprising to finally see it all put together. I am usually excited for Imperialism videos, but I'm a little bit more excited for this one. Let's have a more in-depth rundown on where our teams are located. I think I can 100% say this with the confidence in my chest and not to mean any harm to anyone, but we are going to have conflict in the Middle East. As for Africa, there is a lot of blue in here, and matter of fact, that had changed a couple land areas up to be a different colors because of it. As for South America, there's only four teams, but it's going to be pretty competitive to see who can come out of this continent alive. Like we already discussed and it's pretty funny that the New England Patriots out of all teams control the United States. Freedom, baby. And while it looks like the Arizona Cardinals control a huge area of land, keep in mind this is a Mercator projection map, but the real size of Greenland is actually just a little bit bigger than Texas. As for the Eastern Hemisphere, it's a little dull out here. I mean, other than the Dolphins and Ravens sharing borders in India and Bangladesh, there is also the Eagles in Mongolia, but Russia, China, Korea, Japan, all empty. And matter of fact, the entirety of Oceania including Australia, New Zealand, and Indonesia completely untouched. But the madness has just begun because we have yet to place our power-ups. So on to the power-ups. We'll start by spinning this wheel, which our first one will be Rewind. And now we'll swap over to this wheel. We have all 44 remaining countries on this wheel. We'll spin it twice, and that is where Rewind will be placed both on the map. So one will be going on the great nation of Congo, and the other Rewind power-up will be going on Burma. Alright, our next power-up will be Afterlife. First Afterlife power-up will be placed on Cameroon. The second one will be placed Based on Syria. Next up will be Double Trouble. The first one will be going to Chad. And the second one will be going to Colombia. Three more to go and we'll begin with Clone. The first clone is going to Algeria. And the second clone will be going to Canada. And final two power-ups will go to Evolve. The first Evolved will be going to Chile. And the second one will be going to Zambia. And finally this leaves us with good old-fashioned OG Power of Bandit. The first of two will be placed on Ukraine. And the final power place will be placed on Morocco. And this will be the starting map for turn number one. We have 32 franchises, we have 76 countries, we have 44 unoccupied territories, and we have 12 power-ups. Not to mention, 6 of those 12 are all placed in Africa. The heart continent of the world is going to be a bloodbath. And you can't even forget that we have disasters turned on too. This is going to be one of the best imperialism episodes ever. Grab your popcorn and get ready because turn one begins now. Turn number one. One, we will start with the Arizona Cardinals up there in Green. 
Greenland. So the Cardinals have two paths. They can go to Canada or they can fight the Saints in Iceland. Whatever this arrow is closest to, that's going towards Canada. You know, I believe we just hit an Imperialism record. The fastest ever power-up claimed and it was in one single spin. And even worse is I have to color in all these stupid little islands that are under Canada's control. So yes, this is also considered an expansion, which means the Cardinals will get the best player currently in the free agency pool. And currently, since no teams have lost yet, the best player currently in free agency is Marcus Peters, an 81 overall cornerback. But forget Marcus Peters because they just got the clone power-up. Let me explain how this works. The clone power-up is one of the strongest power-ups because it allows you to get another land area by random selection, meaning you have basically two lives. All right, all empty territories on this wheel right here. Where will the Cardinals be settling up their base? It will be in Greece. Yes, I know you could probably count the pixels with your fingers, but that's another country added on to Europe. The Cardinals are now in Greece. I would like to imagine for these beginning terms, there is going to be a lot of expansions, but now here are the Buccaneers in Brazil. Remember, the Bucks can cross into Africa, but they do have a lot of possibilities in South America, and I think they'll be staying in their continent. Yeah, that arrow was a dead shot for Guiana, so we have another expansion. And once again, we're normally used to seeing much better free agent pickups than this, but considering no teams have lost, the best pickup for the Buccaneers is Lael Collins. It shouldn't take too long until we see our first matchup. I mean, after all, a lot of teams are sharing borders, including the Tennessee Titans. They have the Bears and the Vikings sharing a border with them, and it might be going towards Chicago Bears. And just by a matter of pixels, it sure does. So our first game in Imperialism Episode 9 is the Titans traveling to Chicago Bears. Well, not really Chicago anymore. The first game of Imperialism 9 has gone to overtime. A crucial third down for Will Levis at starting quarterback. He's going to take off with his wheels, and he dives down to the 19-yard line. Will Levis will drop back on this one. Needs at least 9 yards. He has to watch out to take a sack, though. That's exactly what will happen as the Titans will be forced to kick a field goal. So the Bears must respond with 3 if they want to stay alive in this game. Very poor performance so far for the Bears in offense, but a read option for Justin Fields will pick him up to the 50. Now he breaks the tackle and gets tackled at the 40-yard line into Titans territory. So with 3 seconds left, the Bears will attempt a 55-yarder with Cairo Santos to send this one the double OT. Can he get this one through the uprights? It's a long kick but he does make it. We're going to second overtime. Need some yardage here. This is still a very long field goal. Levis is pretty comfortable in the pocket, but he completely overthrows a very wide open Taji Spears. It's fourth and six. Dante Foreman with a solid run. He's gone past field goal range and more. He's still going. He breaks the tackle and he's going to score a... No, he's not. He's going to fall at the one. Come on. I kid you not. I've been recording this game for 40 minutes. At this point, I don't care who wins. I just want to get out of here. And the Bears look like they will finally be a winner in this game with a field goal to win it 34 to 31. Even though he is a little washed, Derrick Henry is probably the greatest thing to happen to Chicago since, well, probably Michael Jordan. And I can only imagine this is setting up to be one of the longest imperialism episodes ever. I believe we're probably already over 10 minutes into this video, and this is only the first team to be eliminated, the Tennessee Titans. And that concludes a very hefty turn one. You better start getting used to this. Turn number two, and we will begin with the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Steelers are located in Belarus which is just west of Russia. Does that go that way? I don't think so. You know, actually, upon further inspection, I thought this was going straight up to Finland, which is occupied by the Indianapolis Colts. But now looking at it, I think this grazes through Russia. Ladies and gentlemen, this steel curtain returns. And now since the Titans were just eliminated, DeAndre Hopkins has joined the free agency pool and now he's been picked up by the Pittsburgh Steelers. Well, now that the Steelers own like half of the Eastern Hemisphere, they're a pretty decent target. But next up is the Cincinnati Bengals, which I believe they're in the Caribbean. But it looks like we have the Cuban Missile Crisis all over again. Instead, this time we're going to South America. Or are we? I think we're actually going towards Central America. So this is an expansion for the Cincinnati Bengals and this is a very weird land area. Well, there's nobody better they can take from the Titans, so they'll have to stick with another free agent already in the pool. That's going to be Casey Hayward, an 80 overall cornerback. I'd imagine it'll take several turns to settle in before we stop seeing this many expansions, but next up is the Bills. I do know the Bills have a lot of traffic down in Africa, and they might be hitting somebody. And by somebody, I mean the Chargers, so we're going to be traveling all the way back to America to play this game in Los Angeles. Good to see the Buffalo Bills are struggling with the LA Chargers, but looks like they can get a field goal as a check down the James Cook has got him to a third and three to the 45. If I'm the Bills, I would like to convert this here and Josh Allen will pass. There is a flag though. This is probably going to be offensive holding. The Chargers, of course, decline that penalty and the Buffalo Bills offense will stay on the field. Fourth and three, Allen converts. No, he doesn't. He gets the catch, but he was well short, over a yard short. It's a turnover on downs. Only one yard needed. It's a handoff to Eckler right up the gut and he's going to get much more than that. He's actually going to score a touchdown. Why 
not? Add salt to the wound. Well, low-key, this was kind of an embarrassing collapse of the Buffalo Bills, and they just couldn't make it out of Africa, and the LA Chargers, I don't even know who their backup quarterback is. Is that really him? His last name is Stick? I mean, maybe I just haven't been watching enough NFL this year, but they just got beat by a dude named Easton Stick. But now my man Easton Stick has a new weapon to throw to. It's gonna be Stephon Diggs. And slowly but surely, Africa is getting depopulated, because both teams that have lost so far have been in Africa. And we're only two turns in, and we've seen a lot of crazy map changes already. Turn number three, we will begin with the Cincinnati Bengals again. Looks like Jake Browning is quick on the move. Will he actually attack this time? I think that's going towards Florida. Well, it looks like the Cuban Missile Crisis actually did happen. In this case, it's the Bengals attacking the Patriots in the United States of America. Let's see if a bunch of poor farmers can defend their land. Well, it looks like the White House has come crashing down, and this honestly makes sense because only the Patriots can win when they're heavily outnumbered, but in this case, they just got beat by the Caribbean and a Central American country. Good for them. Unfortunately, the Bengals were not able to steal the Declaration of Independence. Instead, they had to settle on left tackle Trent Brown. But we got the Bengals making early moves, as it looks like they're trying to be the first team to take control of an entire continent, that being North America. So that was a relatively quick turn three, with the Bengals taking control of the United States of America. And I feel like I just had to mention this, even with the map being in the entire world with 70 plus countries, both LA teams still share a border. I mean, these two teams can literally not escape each other. Turn number four, I'm expecting to see some movement in Europe or the Middle East, and there you have it, it's the Lions. I'm pretty sure the Lions are currently in Iraq. It's either Iraq or Iran. That's probably going towards Saudi Arabia. That will indeed cross through Saudi, so that's an expansion for the Detroit Lions. Well, now that the Buffalo Bills are eliminated, we actually have some viable pickups from the player pool, including Von Miller. The Lions now control 95% of the US's oil imports, so I'm sure the Bengals are keeping an eye on them. But next up is the Philadelphia Eagles, which are in Mongolia. Do they expand here as well? They do have the Steelers above them in Russia, but I think they're actually going down to China. Philadelphia Eagles, get ready to learn Chinese, buddy. And this expansion means yet again, another Buffalo Bill will be taken off and added on to the Philadelphia Eagles. It's Jordan Poyer. Now, we really haven't seen a lot of action over here yet, but Asia is gearing up for a lot of big battles. I mean, look at how many good teams are currently stacking up over here. Like I said, I figured there'd be a lot of expansions early, but next up is the Kansas City Chiefs, which I believe are in Argentina. They have a shot at a power up here. Let's see if they're going to get it. I think they do. I mean, without a doubt, the country of Chile, which is just basically a complete border wall on the left. If they got an arrow any over there, they're going to get this power up, which is evolved. And here's how this power up works. Now, the evolved power up will take the two very worst players on the said team, and it's going to boost their overalls to match the highest overall rated player on their team. So let's just say it's going to be the Minnesota Vikings. The two very bottom players will match the overall of Justin Jefferson, making them both 99 overall. So first, we'll begin with our player pickup. Once again, another Buffalo Bill, Micah Hyde. But now for the evolved power up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and sort the overall by the worst overall. Let's see who it's going to be. And their worst two players will be James Winchester and the quarterback, Blaine Gabbert. Now, I'm actually going to be kind of nice to him because they already have Patrick Mahomes and he's already a 99 overall. They don't need another quarterback in that rating. So, I'm going to take their next worst player, which is Eco Boy Doe. He's a quarterback at 60 overall. I'm going to bump both these dudes up to a 99 overall to meet Patrick Mahomes. So, now taking a look at the Chiefs roster, you can see that new quarterback, Boy Doe, if that's how you say his last name. He's now a 99 overall. And then also a backup tied in to be a 99 overall, which is James Winchester. That's going to make four 99 overalls on the Kansas City Chiefs. What an expansion for them. I love how teams are just taking advantage of the Bills' loss and just stealing all their players, but next up is the Houston Texans. They're actually referred to as the Bolivia Texans now, and they might be going towards Brazil. Yeah, that arrow just kind of sneaks in here. It's going to hit the bottom of Brazil, so that means the Texans will be traveling for the Buccaneers. What a matchup we have here. Both these teams have really good young quarterback play. Baker Mayfield, CJ Stroud, they've got it to an overtime game 24 piece. This also is the second possession for the Texans, which means if they score or any points, game is over. Here comes CJ Stroud. From the 34 to hand off the Devin Singletary. He reads the blocks and he's going to get across midfield. That's where he get tackled to the 49. Looks like we'll have a premature kick to win the game. There's plenty of time, but they're just going to take it from the 24. About a 35-yard kick to take over Brazil. And the Houston Texans will do it. They knock out the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And this is a really solid pickup for the Houston Texans. Ever since Tank Dell went down with injury, they got a really good replacement. It's X-Factor Mike Evans. This might be the first time 
time I've ever said this sentence in imperialism history, but the Texans might have a legitimate shot at winning it all this episode. But the real question, however, is will they be able to dethrone the defending champions? The Kansas City Chiefs will have to play the Texans at one point or another. As we get to turn number five, I do have to say the map distribution is kind of crazy because there's only nine teams left of the Prime Meridian, including the New Orleans Saints. Okay, so out of all the 32 NFL teams that are playing imperialism today, I think the Saints got screwed over the most because they got placed in literally Iceland, in which if I zoom in too much, you basically can't tell that there's a logo anymore. I and mean, this is just a bunch of pixels you're looking at now. So here's what's going to happen. I'm going to roll one arrow. Whatever it's closest to is who they're going to play. It's either going to go towards United Kingdom, the Washington Commanders, or it's going to go towards Greenland and hit the Arizona Cardinals. So will they stay in North America or will they attack Europe? Will they attack Great Britain? That's actually probably closer to Great Britain. And like I've previously clarified, yes, you can attack over these black lines right here. That's what they meant for. So this means the Saints will actually be going towards the United Kingdom, the play, the Commanders. Not going to lie, I was expecting this to be one of the most mid matchups ever, but it actually looks like the Commanders have a chance in this game in overtime. Jacoby Brissett is in the game and he just completed the pass to Jahan Dotson. They have to at least get a field goal to match the score in overtime. Just short of midfield, Brissett's going to take a deep shot and he actually has Terry McLaurin for a touchdown for a walk-off. Okay, this game actually turned out 10 times better than I thought. Jacoby Brissett with the buzzer, the game winner, and he'll beat the New Orleans Saints, and he'll take control of Iceland. Now, I'm not too sure how much this is going to help out the Commanders, but they will definitely take it, as they'll get X-Factor Demario Davis at middle linebacker. And feast your eyes for what's about to be the largest expansion ever. There you have it. We now approach turn six, and we have some fairly surprising moves so far, but next up is the Philadelphia Eagles back again. Now that the Eagles have claimed China, they are a large threat. Let's see if they can get out of there, and I think they're gonna go towards Korea. Yeah, I'm gonna give them this expansion. It's gonna go towards the Korean Peninsula. I apologize to any South Koreans watching this video. I just combined both Koreas to one country. I would apologize to North Koreans, but they probably have no clue what the NFL actually is. And that's a pretty clutch expansion for the Philadelphia Eagles, because look at the X-Factor middle linebacker. That's Levante David. Somehow the Eagles share a border with the Dolphins, Ravens, Broncos, and Steelers, and they did not land on any of them. But next up is the Jets. The Jets are in Venezuela right now, and they currently share a border with the Houston Texans, and I think they're actually going to go over that border. Yeah, I believe the Jets are poking the bear here. Also, I want to say sorry if it's really pixelated. It's just because we are so zoomed in into these continents, and it's going to look better the farther we go down the road. Well, to actually no one's surprised, if you mess with a bull, you get the horns. The Texans will win here 24-14 to over the New York Jets. Jets fans, I'm sorry. Aaron Rodgers still isn't bad. Maybe next imperialism, I'll bring them back. So this is kind of funny. Since the Texans just beat the Jets, they'll get Sauce Gardner. But what's kind of funny here is that in the 2022 NFL Draft, third overall, the Texans selected Derek Stingley Jr. Guess who went fourth overall? Sauce Gardner. They're now on the same team. And one by one, the Texans are taking down teams in South America. Kansas City Chiefs, you might be next. Right now, there's currently only four teams controlling land in the Americas. I'm not even counting the Washington Commanders or in Iceland. But next up is the Bears. I believe they're in Africa. The Bears' last move was a win against the Titans, and now they'll have an expansion. I believe there's a power up there, too. And that arrow is going to go closer to Congo, which means the Bears will get an expansion, and they'll also get the Rewind power-up. This is probably the easiest power-up to explain. This is what it does. The Rewind power-up is exactly what you think it is. The team will be rewarded a 99 overall Hall of Fame legend to join their present-day team. First things first, however, we're going to give them their expansion from the free agent player pool. That's going to be Quinn and Williams. And for the Rewind acquisition, it's the legendary, the sweet Walter Payton. It's so crazy how fast a team can get stacked in imperialism, but next up is the Denver Broncos. This might be a world record. I've never seen the Broncos get caught on faster in my life. Let's just see if they expand this time. Well, to you reoccurring viewers, this is nothing new. It wouldn't be an imperialism video without an expansion, as the Broncos will take control of Afghanistan. I feel like if the Broncos would have a chance against the big boys, and trust me, there's a lot of big boys touching borders with them, they're gonna need another offensive weapon. I decided to give them Chris Godwin from the Buccaneers. Well, we got our Broncos expansion out the way. Are you happy? But next up, it's the Miami Dolphins. They're currently in India. The Dolphins share a border with both the Ravens and Eagles, and it could be going towards one of them. Wow, what a dodge by the Ravens. I mean, I don't want to zoom in too close because this is going to get really pixelated, but this arrow barely misses the Ravens land by just a few pixels, and this is going to hit the top part of China. So India versus China, it's a Dolphins versus Eagles, a very top-heavy matchup between the AFC and the NFC. Let's go. You know, this is kind of a funny matchup because both these teams have been on the same downward spiral. The Eagles have lost four of their last five and essentially have choked their division away. By the way, here's a really good catch to 27. As for the Dolphins, they essentially would choke their division away too if they lose this game this upcoming Sunday. You've probably already seen it. This video probably 
probably won't be out by then, but who knows? Here is Jalen Hurts on the turnaround. Should have been intercepted. That probably would have ended it, but it's second and 10. Xavier Howard cannot complete the catch. Let's just see if the Dolphins can stop him to a field goal. Hurts in some trouble. Gets this one off quick. There's a late flag. Could this be roughing the passer on Jalen Hurts? He did get tackled very last second. It is. What a puny call. That seemed like a clean tackle to me. Of course, Jalen Hurts tried a rushing touchdown there. In real life, they would definitely do a tush push right here, but instead, they're actually going to pass the football, which makes no sense. But you know what makes sense? Jalen Hurts rushing in for the touchdown anyway. It's because why not? And the Eagles take a go-ahead lead against the Miami Dolphins with 15 seconds. Final play. It's from their own 42. Just going to stay short. That's not going to do much. Yeah, the run's just not going to do much there at all. The Eagles will survive, win this game by four points, 21-17. to Didn't take too long of a thought process for this decision. Tyree Kill, a 99 overall, now joins the Philadelphia Eagles. And it's funny because if this was a game about population, the Eagles would basically already win because they control literally like 60 or 70% of Earth's population. They have China and India. That's at least 4 billion people. Okay, so now that the Dolphins are eliminated and Tyreek Hill went to the Eagles, that leaves Jalen Ramsey. He'll be the next player taken from the next expansion, but we're going back to Russia. The Steel Curtain. What's up for the Steelers? There's actually a relatively high chance this could also hit Philadelphia. Let's see. I don't know. Well, I think the Steelers just dodged a bullet because they're actually going straight for Kazakhstan, and that's going to be an expansion. I was literally just talking about it. What player are they going to steal? Jalen Ramsey. What a defensive pickup for this already stacked defensive team. I mean, yeah, just looking at this map, it almost looks like the Soviet Union is back. It's under control of Mason Rudolph, apparently. What a nice landmass for the Steelers. I wonder if they'll collapse like the Soviet Union as well. But next up is Detroit Lions again. The Lions were last caught expanding the Saudi Arabia, but this time I think they're going to be attacking the Green Bay Packers. Yeah, that's kind of crazy. Even when we do the entire world map, they still share a border somehow. This is the new Michigan-Wisconsin, apparently. It's going to be Saudi Arabia Lions versus the Iran Green Bay Packers. What am I even saying? Third and 10, play action. Jordan Love backs up five yards. He wants to sling this one. Is someone open? Somebody got burnt, but it was a little too far led for Christian Watson. Easily caught back up by Sutton, and it's going to be fourth down and 10. Let's see what the Lions call on a very long four yards. Goff going to go short. Oh, he just overthrows what should have been a completion. The Packers are going to get the football back with a minute 57. Attempt number two for Jordan Love. Let's see if he can get some points on the board. Oh, Christian Watson had in his fingertips. The butterfingers came flying in there. It's third and five. Maybe a little too high of a pass for Christian Watson, but you would think with that man's height, he should be able to catch that football. But it doesn't matter because we'll get it right back. This time it's Romeo Dobbs on a slant, and it's a house call. Who's ringing? It's a touchdown for the Green Bay Packers. Maybe they go for two here. This battle of the Middle East is not disappointing. Sure enough, they're going for two to make it a touchdown. That was the easiest two point conversion ever. They are playing 10 yards off Christian Watson. Seven point game. After another forced incompletion, it's a fourth down. The Lions have to convert here, but they can't get it. It's an incompletion. Packers take over on downs, and they should win this football game. Look at this. The Packers just want to score more points, because why not? They're going to win this game 25-15. to This was a very entertaining one. And after the Packers spoiled the Lions' chances in this video, they'll now take Von Miller and add him to the right end. Following that win, the Green Bay Packers and Jordan Love will take control of majority of the Middle East. Add that to the long list of sentences you will never hear on any other channel on YouTube. But with eight teams eliminated, I'm starting to sense the urge that we're about to have a zombie apocalypse. Yeah, that's right. For the first time since episode 5, disasters return, but more specifically, Dead Rising returns. So disaster number one, Dead Rising, what does it do? Well, essentially, I'm going to randomly select two teams to come back from the dead and join back on the map. All right, spin one of two. Who is the first team to be brought back to the map? It will be the... Oh, who's close? It's the Miami Dolphins. Well, there's 24 possible countries they can go to. Where will the Miami Dolphins be going to? Libya. Well, the Dolphins will join back in a packed Africa. The only downside is that they are now missing Tyree Kill and Jalen Ramsey, but look at this. They're right next to the clone power-up, and they're right next to the double trouble power-up. Let's see if they can probably escape with the clone. They might need to. But who is the second team that the Dead Rising disaster is bringing back? The New Orleans Saints. Okay, I'm kind of interested in this. Well, where exactly are the Saints going? They will be landing on Alaska. Okay. Well, I think it's 100% safe to say that's a much 
much better starting position than literally Iceland. But here is the map now that we have the Dolphins and Saints back. We're back to 26 total teams. The Dead Rising disaster is now over. And let's continue forward with turn number 9. So now the turn 9 and we're back up to 26 total teams. And next up is the Big Blue, the New York Giants. I can't remember what country the Giants are in, but it's somewhere in Africa. And I think this might be going towards Madagascar. You know, eventually somebody had to claim it, but it ended up being the New York Giants. I feel like the Giants could definitely use one of the best pass catchers in the game right now. That's Amon Ross St. Brown. Maybe next the Giants can recruit the Penguins of Madagascar to block for them on the offensive line. But here is the Houston Texans once again. Sometimes in Imperialism, you just have to get lucky wheel of luck, and that's exactly what's happened to the Texans. But I think they're going to take on the Kansas City Chiefs themselves. They sure are. This is definitely risky, but if they win it, it will definitely pull off. It's the Texans versus the Chiefs. They do unfortunately have to run a play before the two-minute warning, so let's just see if they can get a conversion here. Five rush for the Chiefs. It's a drop. They're gonna have to punt the football to the Chiefs. They're getting the ball back in midfield. Third and one, they decide to pass again. Better be a completion. Sure enough, it is, and timeouts are starting to be called. I would rather just take the touchdown for all the Texans there. Just let them walk in, and they're now the 13. They should win this game. The Chiefs are still not running the football. Maybe they have a touchdown pass. What? Oh, it's intercepted. No way. Hold up a second. Jimmy Ward with the interception. That is one of the clutchest plays in Madden simulation imperialism history right there. That is going to give the Texans the ball back at the 25-yard line. Or the 20-yard line, excuse me. But all the Kansas City Chiefs had to do there was run the football. But instead, they just kept on passing it. And Mahomes made a vital mistake. Timeouts are starting to be called. Let's see if the Texans can get one first down. Another handoff. Can he get the outside? He can. And that's a pickup of plus nine. Timeout called. Devin Singletary just iced this game. One of the most clutchest wins I've ever seen. We've had a lot of classic games this episode in Imperialism. The Texans are 3-0 in this video. And a really great pickup for the Texans offense. CJ Stroud will be passing the football to Travis Kelsey. It was almost like I was foreshadowing this event the entire time, but the Houston Texans, wow, they now are the only team on the map to currently control all of one continent. Well, they don't control all of it, but they're the only team on South America as they knock out the Chiefs. I'd say that's a pretty early exit for Kansas City. How about these Houston Texans? They have completely eliminated all competition away from South America. But next up are the Denver Broncos. I do want to get this out of the way real quick. Expansions, the next few ones are going to be very valuable. I mean, now that the Chiefs are gone, a lot of good players just hit the free agent pool, including the players the Chiefs got from the Evolve Power Up. I say that because the Broncos love expanding. But there are some pretty strong teams next to the Broncos. Let's just see if it's either a matchup or an expansion. You know, I love how the Broncos are completely surrounded every which way, but one way, and that's the way they end up getting the expansion. Of course that happens. They're going towards Pakistan. It's an expansion. They're about to get a really good player. Now, I'm giving the Broncos Chris Jones instead of the 99 overall tied in, which got converted because the Evolve power-up, just because Chris Jones is an X-Factor, and that's much stronger than not having one at all. And I hate to break it to you, Denver Broncos, but your time of expanding it's over. You're gonna have to play a game if you get caught on again. I feel like this is important sharing, but there currently is nine power-ups still remaining on the board and I believe the Vikings can actually get one of them. They actually can. This is the first time the Vikings have been caught on today and I don't think they're going that way. Instead, they're going to hit a roadblock and they're going to go straight for their division rivals. So another NFC North division rival matchup. We've seen Packers versus Lions. Now it's time for Bears versus Vikings in Chicago. Wow, the mid... Wow, the Chicago Bears put on a very dominating performance, but to be fair, the Minnesota Vikings are missing Kirk Cousins basically this entire year. He's basically been the reason why they haven't been doing so good. The Bears have been pretty hot recently, and they have two wins in this today's video. Well, Justin Jefferson picked just the right time to come back from injury because now he's a Chicago Bear. We have seen some pretty good stars in the Bears now, including Walter Payton and now Justin Jefferson. And with this win, we are now down to eight total teams in Africa. The Bears just took down another. So we're back down the 24 total teams and next up a new team finally it's the Vegas Raiders I'm pretty glad to see this team because they are in Europe and we have not seen much movement at all in Europe and I think this will be an expansion well it looks like the Raiders will be raiding Germany this is some alternate history going on right here and the Raiders were going to pick up a very solid offensive weapon James Winchester the previously evolved player on the Kansas City Chiefs I have been patiently waiting for something to happen in Europe and it finally happened the LA Chargers are now back in Africa let's see what the Chargers end up doing they could 
snag a power up here, but they're actually going to go down south a little bit. And wow, this was a very close arrow. Almost hit the LA Rams, but instead it's going to be an expansion going down to Ghana. And the Chargers will get the other evolved player coming from the Chiefs. He's a 99 overall cornerback. I'm not even going to attempt to say his name again. I think both LA teams just dodged a bullet right there. They don't want to play each other, but here is the Denver Broncos. They will be playing a game. This is a monumental imperialism moment. A lot of tough competition for them too, but let's just see. I think that's going dead for the Eagles. Now, I'm not going to rule the Broncos out, but this is a tough game. The Eagles have been pretty lenient recently with giving some free wins to pretty bad teams. But the Broncos will be traveling to the Eagles. Third down and six. You do not want to punt the football here. Instead, it looks like he's going to take a sack and he's going to lose like 15 yards in the process. That is the last thing you wanted to do. Well, the Eagles got the ball at midfield and now they're at the 30. This game is basically over with a field goal kick. I agree, Eagles. Why settle for less when you can switch to State Farm and score a touchdown to win this game in overtime and to finally knock off the Denver Broncos? I think that's funny to say because this is the fastest the Broncos have ever been eliminated in imperialism. Kind of crazy. Yeah, Patrick Sertan and Darius Slay on the same team is basically giving opposing quarterbacks sleep paralysis. No offense, Broncos fans, but the Denver Broncos and Imperialism will always be the poster child. I mean, I'm always just going to make fun of them just because all they do is expand and they can just never win games. Wow, man, the Broncos did not make it to the late game Imperialism. Wow, it's just a breath of fresh air. Speaking of breath of fresh air, a new team, the Jaguars. They currently control Serbia, which is just to the west of Italy, so we might see an expansion here or they could take on a different opponent. But I'm going to give them an expansion here. This arrow just hit the top of Bulgaria. I wonder if Saxonville will be making a return because they just added on Chris Jones from the free agent pool. Very solid expansion for the Jacksonville Jaguars. And here's another new team, the Panthers, who are in Turkey. So refreshing to finally be seeing some new teams. Where are the Panthers heading? I think they might be going towards Green Bay. I mean, we have seen some really close arrows today's video, but this green line represents the arrow we just got. It hits just a bit of Green Bay's land. So yes, this is a matchup against the Green Bay Packers. I'm not too awfully surprised by the score. I mean, the Green Bay Packers love playing down to their competition, and they did let the Panthers score 30 on them in real life, so Bryce Young is going to run out of the pocket, maybe deliver a pass completion, and nobody's on this man at all. They are now at the 41-yard line, and he gets out of bounds, too, to Tommy Trimble. This is a little concerning, Green Bay. Here comes a blitz by Green Bay, and it pays off. Devondre Campbell with a really good sack, and that's probably going to end the game. I don't think they'll get another playoff. I stand corrected. They snap it with one single second, so this just has to be an end zone shot and not quite. The Green Bay Packers, this was a little too close for comfort, but they will take the W nonetheless. You know, every time the Panthers lose, the player I always give up will always be Brian Burns. I don't know why this always happens. I guess it's just the Panthers have literally no one else better to offer, but you know what? It's an upgrade for the Packers. They'll definitely take it. And it looks like the Green Bay Packers are starting a modern day Ottoman Empire as they take down the Panthers in Turkey. Well, here's a full map update of what's been happening, and I think we can finally tell who are the real dominant true factors in today's video, except the Cardinals. They have done nothing. <laughs> Lucky turn number 13, and here are the Pittsburgh Steelers once again. You think now is the time they finally take on their Pennsylvania foes, the Eagles? Uh, it doesn't look like it. Instead, if we were actually to draw a straight line from the middle of their logo, it actually comes in contact with Poland, so it'll be an expansion for the Steelers. Again. Are the Pittsburgh Steelers becoming the next Denver Broncos? Who knows? But instead, they'll pick up Daniil Hunter, and he'll be a good pickup for them at left end. Meanwhile, as the Steelers expand for the third time, we still have eight teams in Africa, including the Cleveland Browns, who are actually completely trapped, I believe. Well, that actually is a true statement, but I didn't regard that they can jump over the Atlantic Ocean and go to South America. So they have two possibilities. It's take on the Chargers or are they going to go to the Houston Texans? Whatever it's closest to is what they're going to get. I don't know what I'd rather have here. These are both tough matchups, but I think it's going to go to the Chargers instead. So the Browns will stay in Africa, and they will take on the LA Chargers. I don't think Madden has given Joe Flacco his updated roster yet, because I know he plays 10 times better than this in real life, and now the Browns got back to the 3-yard line, but this time it's 4th down to go. I expect him to go for this. Sure enough, this is make or break. Definitely could be considered an upset for the Chargers if they can get this win, but they play too soft. No, it's a drop and forced incompletion at the very last second and a turnover on downs. Browns still have a chance of defense, but it's looking like a Chargers win right now. I think if this game was to happen in real life right now, this would be a completely different outcome, but somehow the Browns are out of this video. And this is a really solid pickup to replace Joey Bosa on injury reserve, Miles Garrett. Not gonna lie, I'm a full believer that if the Browns had their full healthy roster that game, they probably would have won. It's just unfortunate that I'm doing the current active rosters, but the Chargers, good win for them at least. That's another team in Africa down, and I believe we're on turn 14, and here are the Dallas. 
Dallas Cowboys. The Cowboys have dominated in imperialism history, but what's their first move today? And I think they'll be getting an expansion. Sure is, that's a dead shot for Ethiopia. You know what would be crazy? What if Omari Cooper was on the Cowboys? That's crazy, right? The Cowboys are used to making early moves, so it's definitely surprising to see him this late. But next up here are the Bengals back. So the Bengals have one of two options. They either get an expansion to Mexico or they go up to Canada, whatever it's closest to. I move their base to the United States of America. It's closer to Mexico. They'll get an expansion. You know, I'm kind of glad they got this expansion because Mexico being left unclaimed was kind of bothering me a little bit. It's kind of weird how they had Central America, but not Mexico. I remember a couple years ago, we made hella fun of the Bengals for drafting Jamar Chase over Panay Sewell, but it looks like it's all came full circle because guess who they just picked up from the Lions? Panay Sewell. Pretty satisfying expansion if I say so myself, but here are the LA Rams. This is their first time being caught on and they also have a shot at expansion or a possible matchup. And honestly, that might be an expansion. A really good expansion that is too, because now they're going to claim the second in the final clone power up. And now the Rams will have a little bit of backup. They can finally get out of Africa and have some protection. Not gonna lie, I keep on forgetting who's in the free agent player pool. There's just so many expansions going on, so I kind of forgot about Justin Simmons. So this is a solid pickup for the Rams. Now let's get to their clone. Alright, so there's only 14 unoccupied countries left without any power-ups. Only one of these can host the Rams on their second clone land. Where will it be? It's gonna be New Zealand, the isolated country. That's funny. And honestly, that was a really good pull for the LA Rams because look at this. There's only one way in and one way out. So if the Rams get eliminated in Africa, they'll go back to their mainland, which will be New Zealand, and you can see they basically get a free expansion if they get landed on, unless somehow a team lands on Australia. I doubt that will happen. There's still so many power-ups. It's tough to say if all of them are even going to get claimed at all, and next up is Chicago Bears once again. The Bears have been really active in this video. Let's see where they continue going, and maybe an expansion as well. Yeah, this has been an expansion-heavy turn. Make that the fourth expansion of this turn, and even better, there was the evolved power-up on this country, which I believe is Zambia. That's the second one, too. We already know how this works. Let's go ahead and give them their free agent pickup. I'm telling you, man, I'm running out of ideas for expansion pickups, but this is still pretty good. Tristan Wirfs at left tackle. So now let's talk about the Evolve power-up. Since they picked up Justin Jefferson from the Vikings, that actually helps a lot, even though they already had Walter Payton. This means that the very bottom two players in their team will turn up to a 99 overall. Let's see who that's going to be. First one's going to be another tight end, Patrick Scales. And then Nathan Peterman, the quarterback, is going to be a 99 overall. All. That is just perfect. So yeah, that was probably the greatest ever Evolve power-up we've ever seen because now they have a new quarterback. This is just a meme. 99 overall Nathan Peterman, and now we have someone to throw to as well. 99 overall Patrick Scales at tight end. Yeah, we might be setting an imperialism record with most expansions in one turn. Can we finally get out of this turn? The Seattle Seahawks are up next for the first time. I hate to say this, but the Seahawks might actually expand here, or maybe not. Well, even though it's not an expansion, we still couldn't escape the Bears because the Seahawks will be traveling on the road in the Bears will have a home game. This team is stacked. Let's see how they do on the field. Yeah, I think the Seattle Seahawks picked the wrong time to play the Chicago Bears. They are way too strong. They just need this touchdown here to win the game because that is the second possession in overtime and they get it. The Chicago Bears are just adding on to the fire right now. I believe that's their fourth or third win this video. This is another team to look out for with an overtime victory over Seattle with Derrick Henry, of course. I have no clue how DK Metcalf is this low of a rating, but he still is an X factor. So that definitely definitely helps. He'll be the wide receiver number two in Chicago. Yeah, the Bears are currently that one meme of the Grim Reaper knocking on all those doors. They are coming for the rest of Africa. Another win, and now we're down to one, two, three, four, five, six teams in Africa. We have made it to turn 15. Now we are on 20 teams remaining, and here are the Arizona Cardinals again. So here's all the possibilities of the Cardinals. They can either get an arrow that's going to go closest to the Commanders, an arrow closest to the Bengals in the United States, or an arrow closest to the Saints in Alaska. We'll just spin it once. Whatever it's closest to, that's what they're going to do. All right, here is the spin, and I believe this arrow is definitely closest to the Commanders going towards the United Kingdom. So yes, the Cardinals will be traveling to the tiny little Iceland to take on the Commanders. Let's see who wins this game. Yeah, the Commanders and Cardinals sounds like the worst football game I've ever heard in my life, but somehow it went to overtime, but now we have a fourth down and 14 for Jacoby the Brissett. He has to get it to stay alive considering they're already down a touchdown. This could very well be the final Commanders play in this video, 
video if they don't get at least 14 yards and it's just overthrowing Terry McLaurin. The Arizona Cardinals will make a defensive stand and they will win this game and they will take control of Great Britain. So now the Cardinals will make a pretty solid addition to their wide receiver room, adding on Terry McLaurin. And low-key, I'm not saying watch out for the Cardinals, but they're definitely making headlines as they now have probably the biggest area of land, one of them at least, and they still own Greece as well. Well, a new day of recording and we pick up with turn number 16. We're back to the Steelers. There is a possible expansion left for them, but I'm pretty sure this will be their first matchup. I think it's going towards China. Yeah, Steelers, this is your first actual game and it's a pretty important one because you gotta take on your Pennsylvania rivals. Not anymore. It's now your Asian rivals. It's Russia versus China. The Steelers versus the Eagles. I'm not surprised to see the Eagles have had some trouble with their next door neighbors. I mean, the Steelers have been pretty decent so far in this video and there's Tyreek Hill. This game is essentially over. Okay. <laughs> I'm surprised Mason Rudolph has put up 30 points with the Steelers offense and another interception. Yeah, this game is over. The Eagles would close with a victory winning 45 to 30. And now the Eagles, you get the add on an unstoppable force on defense. That's TJ Watt. And now what you're about to witness is the second resurgence of the Mongol Empire. And there you have it. Well, here's an updated view of the map as now the Eagles control basically 95% of Asia. And I don't know about you, but eight teams have been eliminated since Dead Rising happened. And now things are a little windy on the map because we have a tornado coming in. Our second disaster has struck. It's a tornado. And essentially what it's going to do is going to take three teams and randomly displace them across the map, meaning a total of six teams will be in a completely different land area. All right, so here's the remaining 18 teams. These two teams will swap places. It's going to start with the... Raiders and the Raiders they are going to swap places with the Ravens okay so the Ravens are getting out of Asia good for them well I feel good for the Ravens because they were essentially completely cornered by the Eagles they now made their way to Europe but I feel especially bad for the Raiders because now they're the ones completely encapsulated by the Eagles but hey at least the rewind power up is next to them in Burma all right the next two teams to swap it's going to start with the Chicago Bears who have been dominating Africa maybe not a good thing for them to get moving but the Bears are going to swap places with the 40 Niners. Ooh, this is interesting. Well, here's what that tornado swap did. As you can see, the Bears were kind of dominating Africa. Maybe it's a good thing for the other teams that the Bears are no longer in Africa because now the Niners take over. It's a bad thing for the Cowboys, however, because now they share a border with the Niners, their number one enemy. But now look at the Bears. They have been compressed to this tiny little area in Oman, which the Niners had. The Niners have done nothing this entire episode, and now the only team they share a border with is the Green Bay Packers. I think they could take them on, too. All right, so this is the final tornado swap. It's going to start with the Jacksonville Jaguars. And the Jaguars will be swapping areas with the Saints. Okay. And so after our three tornado swaps, this is what the map is looking like now. And now the Jaguars are in a pretty decent position. They share a board of the Eagles, but I'm pretty sure they can take on the Cardinals. As for the Saints, they got a little bit screwed. They're now in the middle of all of it in Europe. But here we go. We have six teams that just swapped places. And now we're continuing on with, I believe, turn number 17. So yes, turn number 17, and we will be going back to the Bengals. It looks like the Bengals are trying to take control of all of North America. America, and they're going to go up to Canada. They want to keep on getting all the land they can. So yes, this is a dead shot. Bengals versus the Cardinals. 23-17 game here in Arizona. As long as the Bengals don't allow a Hail Mary 2.0, they should be straight. There's 30 seconds. There's a Hail Mary right there. It's caught at the 40. Couldn't break the tackle, but it's the first and 10 of the 32. Do they get another playoff? They don't have a timeout. Rondell Moore with a catch, and looks like Kyler Murray has one more play. He has a completion to Terry McLaurin, and he has a touchdown. Are you serious? Extra point wins this game game. What a stunner for the Cardinals. Two plays, 75 yards. And this point after the attempt to win the game, here to make it 24 to 23, the Cardinals pull off the unthinkable. I was thinking this was the Bengals game to win, but instead it was theirs to lose. The Cardinals pull it off and they will take control of most of North America. All that's left is Alaska. I'm still like complete shock because of the upset, but now they're going to add another X Factor wide receiver. It's going to be Jamar Chase. You know, it's very weird to say this, but the big three of this video might very well be the Texans, the Bears, and now the Cardinals. Look how much land they just took control of. So yes, all that's left for the Cardinals in North America to take control of the entire continent is Alaska. That's controlled by the Jaguars at this very moment. Now at turn number 18, we're going to continue with the Atlanta Falcons. Finally, this team has yet to been called on. So glad to see them. Unfortunately, this might be the only time we'll see them because they are completely nudged between the Packers and the Eagles. Two of the best teams right now, and I think that's going straight for the Eagles. Yeah, I would be completely shocked if the Falcons pull this one out. I'm not going to count them out, but we'll just see what happens. They gotta travel to the Eagles. You know, the Falcons have a chance to do the funniest thing ever right here. Look how many 
X factors on the Eagles defense. Do you think Desmond Ritter can handle this? And right there, a pretty solid completion. Can this dude do that in real life, please? I don't know why I thought that was Desmond Ritter. That's actually the true GOAT, Taylor Heineke at quarterback. He's got him into the 44-yard line now. Can he get 44 more yards? He goes for a check down the Cordell Patterson, and he just gets drilled into the ground. That does nothing. This could very well be the Falcons' final possession in this game and in this video. I don't see him getting the ball back if they don't convert here. The Eagles just need one timeout. They get it back, and oh, just overthrown. Are they going to go for this, or will they punt the football away? I don't trust their defense enough. I like the call. Thank you for not punting. I don't think you would have got it anyway. See, there you have it. What a completion. That's a first and 10 to the 26. Guess who? Kyle Pitts. 46 seconds left for the 12-yard line. Heineke escapes the pressure. Going to run for it, and he slides down to the 7-yard line. Picks up 6, and a timeout's called. Can the Falcons get 7 more yards? Empty formation for Heineke. He rolls out, looking to pass on the run. Instead, he just loses 10-plus yards. That's the last thing you wanted to do. Does Taylor Heineke have it in him? He lines up empty. 4 rush the Eagles. He scrambles out again. Throw on the run. It's a touchdown to Cordell Patterson. No one was even close to him. Extra point takes the lead. Leave it to the Falcons to shank this extra point, but I'm pretty sure Young Wei Ku should knock this one through. The Falcons have a one-point lead with five seconds. Short kick. Can they get a return off of this? Zeros on the board. They cannot. The Atlanta Falcons hold on and win the biggest upset of this video so far, in my opinion. What a last-second rally for the Atlanta Falcons as they're now going to steal Tyree Kill from the Eagles, and I'm going to tell you right now, a lot of good players have just hit the free agent player pool. The Eagles were stacked. I mean, I can tell you right now, this episode of Imperialism was the episode of the underdogs. I mean, now we have the Cardinals, Texans, Bears, and now the Falcons. Look as Russia just turned red. That's kind of ironic. I mean, I can tell you right now, I had no clue what was going to happen today's video, but this just completely blows my mind. What am I even looking at right here? 16 teams remain, half the league gone. I am surprised with the quality of these games so far, and now we're going back to the really strong powerhouse Texans. I wonder if the Texans want to take on the Cardinals, the battle of all the marbles, but instead, I think that's action across the Atlantic Ocean and go towards Africa. Yeah, that was legitimately like a perfect arrow. It was going straight for the Chargers, so that means that the Texans are going into a new continent for the first time this video. They are taking on the LA Chargers. I mean, how about it? The Texans' win streak just keeps on moving forward. Honestly, there was only so much Easton Stick, the backup quarterback for the Chargers, could have done, but CJ Stroud has been real dominant this video with Travis Kelsey, so many good players in the Texans, that they're going to add another one too. Yeah, I would legitimately be scared of the Texans if I'm a different team right now, because now they just added on some defensive power as well, Miles Garrett. And now we're starting to see a lot of teams drop like flies, which also means a lot of good players are starting to hit the free agent pool. Expansions are harder to come by now since there's less land, but expansions will be really meaningful from here on out. So now that we get to turn 20, I do have to say it has been a minute since we've last seen an expansion, but here's the Green Bay Packers. More than likely, the Packers will be matched up with the Falcons, but instead they're going completely opposite direction than the Falcons. Well, you know me, I like to talk things into existence, which is exactly what happened was an expansion, and they actually expanded the Syria, and it also has the afterlife power-up. The first time we've seen it today, kind of a long wait, but this is what the afterlife power-up does. And for the bandit power-up, you get to steal two players from two randomly selected teams, a very strong power-up overall. And for the free agent pickup, like I said, the pickups are going to be really strong now. I decided to give a pickup that Jordan Love would definitely love. Love. That's Stefan Diggs at wide receiver number one. The Green Bay Packers are still making headlines out there in the Middle East, but here are the LA Rams back again. The Rams are protected with the clone power, but they're currently situationed in Africa, and I wonder if that's going to take on probably the Texans. And upon further review, it looks like the LA Rams dodged a bullet. Good. I wouldn't want to play the Texans either. Matter of fact, they actually got something way better. They're going to get a power up with this expansion to Morocco, and it's the first time we've seen this today as well. It's Bandit. This is how it works. The afterlife power-up is exactly what you would think it would do. It basically gives the team an extra life, so if they lose, they have some protection. But first, we're going to start with our player acquisition from the expansion. Good to have them back, Jalen Ramsey. But now for the bandit power-up. Here we have a wheel with all remaining teams on it, except the Rams. Of course, we spin it twice, and they're going to steal a player from both the teams that it lands on. Starting with the first team, they're going to steal a player from the Jacksonville Jaguars. I can't think of anybody on my head right now from the Jaguars that's worth stealing. Next up, oh, they're going to steal a player from the Niners. That's going to be a good player no matter what. Probably Christian McCaffrey. So here's the two players the Rams will steal from the Bandit power-up. Yes, I knew it was going to be CMC. It could have been Nick Bosa, but CMC, much more value in my opinion. But for the player for the Jaguars, I forgot they had Chris Jones. These are two really clutch pickups, both 95-plus overall X-Factors. The Rams are now completely loaded. Not to mention, the Rams also have the clone power which means they have two land areas. They are 
stacked, and here are the Saints, which are now, I believe, are in Europe. Lots of options for the Saints, but it looks like they'll be taking their armies kinda to the northwest. And this will actually go towards the Czech Republic, which is now under control of the Baltimore Ravens. The Ravens are finally playing a game today, and honestly, it seems kinda winnable in their favor. Yeah, I apologize, Saints. I mean, you did just have to line up against basically the best team in the NFL. You guys did a lot right this episode, but the tornado kinda screwed you over, and the Ravens finally making moves pretty late onto this episode. Yeah, there's not much holes that the Ravens can get fixed on their team, but I decided to give them an upgrade at the running back position. That's Alvin Kamara. It's good to finally see some action in Western Europe as the Ravens will take down the New Orleans Saints. Now we've reached turn number 21. I do have to mention though real quick that we still have five remaining power-ups, including both of them are still the double troubles, but here are the Dallas Cowboys. The Cowboys can either play the 49ers or expand, and I think what's going to happen is what they didn't want to happen. They're playing the 49ers. Yeah, that's a dead shot for the 49ers land ever since they took it from the Chicago Bears, but we're going to have another team eliminated in Africa, and this is a huge matchup for both sides of the ball. I'm sure the Niners definitely been struggling a little bit without Christian McCaffrey, but they still have some pretty good stars. There's one of them right there. Elijah Mitchell getting the ball, and he hits the right sideline for a pickup of like 40 yards, and now he's at the 30-yard line of the Cowboys territory. Field goal wins this game. As long as Brock Purdy doesn't make any stupid mistakes like Patrick Mahomes did earlier on in this video, it's not going to happen because Debo Samuel has the walk-off touchdown. It took two total plays for the Niners to go into overtime and destroy them, and that actually wasn't even Debo Samuel. Who cares? They have stars everywhere. The Niners win this game 37-31 in overtime. I believe that's Jawan Jennings with a touchdown win in overtime, and they're going to steal a plater from the Dallas Cowboys. And now the Niners will get the bolster up their defense even more. I'm putting Micah Parsons at left outside linebacker, 96 overall X-Factor. This is actually kind of crazy to see. I'm used to the Cowboys making it to the top 10 every single episode, and they normally win games too, but not this time. They're going to get bounced a little bit earlier than they expected. This leaves us with five teams in Africa and a total of 13 teams remaining on the world. Turn number 22, and we are going back, or actually for the first time, the Indianapolis Colts. They have yet to been called on. Kind of sucks though, because I think it's too late. Who knows? Maybe they can do something. They're going down south. Yeah, this is one of the instances where I just feel bad for a team. They started in Finland, and they have yet to been called on this video, and it's just really sucked, because now they have to play the Atlanta Falcons, this monstrosity of team taking up Russia. Maybe the Colts have a chance. Let's just see. You see, it's funny because if the Colts win this game, they've done absolutely nothing this entire video. They'll go from doing nothing to having the most land area in the entire world, but Gardner Minshew just takes a horrible sack, and that rings in the two-minute warning. Gardner Minshew is just shy of midfield. Falcons bring five. It's a check down to Jonathan Taylor. Honestly, he might have the first down. Nope, I didn't see those Falcons coming in and taking the tackle to a fourth down and six. It's Jeff Akuda. But of course, the Colts are still going to go for this. They have nothing left to prove. They just have to win this game on this right here. Gardner Minshew, quick pass and nodded down. Good defense right there. I believe Jesse Bates just made the play. It's a turnover on downs. One first down ends the game. The Falcons would kick a field goal and they would win this game 23 to 14. You know the drill. It wouldn't be a Colts imperialism loss without them giving up Quentin Nelson. There's just no one better really to give up. And I apologize Colts fans. This is cruel. I mean you guys go another imperialism episode without getting a single win. This is just, it hurts. But on the bright side, I mean look at the Atlanta Falcons taking control of some things over in Asia and I believe we've reached the top 12 teams. Most of the times, or I should say a lot of the times, imperialism is a game of luck, and the Colts are probably the unluckiest team to face the earth, but here are the Chicago Bears. The Bears could be playing the Packers, or they could be playing the Falcons, or an expansion. Which one is it? Well, it looks like that arrow couldn't dodge Saudi Arabia, as the Bears will travel to play the Green Bay Packers. They can't eliminate it here, but they can definitely take away their afterlife power-up. Let's see if the Bears can do just that. Whew, okay, I guess the Bears just dominated the Packers. They're gonna take away their afterlife power-up, and they get to steal a player. The Packers survive, but this definitely hurts. Yeah, I don't even know if Stephon Diggs was a Packer for 10 minutes, but now he joins the most stacked receiving room on the board right now. Justin Jefferson, Stephon Diggs, and DK Metcalf, and DJ Moore. This team is loaded. So not much of a map change here. Only one thing's gonna change. The afterlife power-up is no more. The Packers are vulnerable to being knocked off the map now. Turn number 24. There's still a lot of teams on this board that I don't think should be here, but here are the Ravens. They definitely deserve to be here. This is only the second time the Ravens have been caught on this video, and I think they'll be expanding somewhere. Yeah, this is one 100% an expansion. It was a really close arrow between France and Italy, but it was closer to France, so I'll give them that. I'm sure there's a lot of good skill position players left in the pool, but I couldn't pass on a 99 overall Zach Martin, who's now a member of the Baltimore Ravens. Moving forward, we will pick back up with the Raiders. Okay, it's been a minute since we've seen them. I actually don't even know if they played a single game yet, but it's gonna be pretty hard to ignore the Atlanta Falcons. Yeah, I mean, their chance of an expansion right there was very unlikely, so instead, they have to travel into India. They gotta take on the mother country, the Atlanta Falcons. They control a 
lot of Asia right now. Yeah, the Raiders didn't stand a chance. They hung around just a little too long, and Taylor Heineke gets the job done. And a lot of good Raiders players just hit the pool, but the best is going to go to the Atlanta Falcons. That's Max Crosby, 97 overall X Factor. You know, it's crazy because I thought the Falcons would have been screwed in this video. I mean, they literally were surrounded by nothing but the Eagles, but now they've managed to turn that into like three straight wins. Granted, they've all been pretty easy wins, I'm not going to lie. And now with 11 teams left, there's only two other teams in Asia other than the Atlanta Falcons. It's the Green Bay Packers and the Chicago Bears. You know, I'm looking at the top 11 teams, and I gotta say, there's still a few that seem like imposters. They don't belong here, and now we're going back to the Chicago Bears. Can they finally take out the Green Bay Packers? Let's just confirm if they're even going that way or not. They could get an expansion or take on the Falcons. I think that's going right back to Saudi Arabia. We might have a rematch here. All right, sure enough, it's a divisional rematch. All the marbles here. It's Packers versus Bears. Winner takes control of all the Middle East. Great clock management by the Green Bay Packers, and they still have all timeouts. Love is going to deliver a rocket here, and that's going to be caught for a touchdown to bring the lead to one point for the Bears. Dontavian Wicks brings it to 34-33, but Bears will get a possession. So the Bears start with the football in overtime, but they're already facing some adversity. A third down and four, but Nathan Peterman delivers a bullet, and he gets it off to DJ Moore for the first down. Another third down. The Packers will be lucky to stop him to a field goal, but Nathan Peterman goes RPO, and he picks up the first down himself. How about it? This is the third, third down on this drive, but this one's going to be the toughest one. They need at least seven here. Nathan Peterman's going to scramble out. And he's going to go for a run, and no one was blocking that. And somehow, Nathan Peterman picks this up first and into the 22. How about a fourth third down? The Packers are currently 0 for 3 on third downs right now. It's another Nathan Peterman run, and he just gets walloped. He had a wide open lane, but he decided to cut back in, and three Packers just gang up on him. I think the Bears are forced to kick a field goal here. The Packers will have to at least match three. It's going to be 37-34. Jordan Love takes over from the 30-yard line, needs at least three points. Good audible right there. Has Aaron Jones wide open on a wheel route, and he might go the distance to end this game and stun the Chicago Bears. I did not think the Packers would pull it off, but they do it when it is most needed, considering they didn't even have their afterlife power-up. It was all on the line there, and they get it done. What a win. I don't know why it's so laggy in Lambeau as well, but Aaron Jones to the house. Yes, yeah, so many good Bears players just hit the free agent pool, including Walter Payton, DK Metcalf, Stefan Diggs, and much more, but the best is going to the Green Bay Packers. It's Justin Jefferson. I am very proud of the Chicago Bears, however. They had quite the run in today's video, but that overtime definitely cost them today. The Green Bay Packers are staying alive. Well, now that we've reached the top 10 teams, I don't know about you, but I think it's time to start watching the skies because a meteor shower is about to hit three random teams. This is how this disaster works. And our final disaster is about to happen. It's a meteor shower where three permanent meteor power-ups will fall from the sky and they will land on a team and they will stay there for the remainder of the video. All right, so our final disaster meteor shower is finally going to hit these three teams. We'll start with the first team it's going to hit. It's going to land on the already stacked Houston Texans. But which meteor are they going to get? And it looks like they're going to get a plus five quarterback upgrade. That is very strong. And because of this asteroid that just landed on the Houston Texans land. It just took CJ Stroud from being an 80 overall all the way up to an 89 overall. Huge jump. All right, second asteroid will land on the land of the Atlanta Falcons somewhere in Russia. And which meteor will land on them? It's going to be plus five to the running back. Bijan Robinson's getting a nice upgrade. And this is a really strong upgrade. Bijan Robinson was an 84. He went up 12 overall. He's now 96 overall. Really good. And the final team to get hit by meteorite will be the Green Bay Packers. And this, of course, leads leaves only the plus five to their wide receiver number one. And this, of course, is going to go to Justin Jefferson. Kind of sucks for the Packers because he's already a 99 overall, but hey, he just became an even better 99 overall. So now that our final disaster has struck, here are where the meteors have landed. And keep in mind, these are going to stay here for the remainder of the game. So for an example, let's just say the Rams end up beating the Texans. Well, they're going to get that plus five quarterback meteor. It's going to stay there the entire game. That's why these are important. Anyways, it landed on the Texans, Packers, and Falcons. All those teams got really good upgrades, and we continue on with the top 10 teams. And so turn 26, the top 10 begins. Here are the Jacksonville Jaguars back again. They're actually the Alaska Jaguars, but I just like saying Jacksonville because it's alliteration. I think that's going towards Canada. No doubt that's kind of going towards the Northwest Territories or the British Columbia province. I can't remember what it's called, but the Jaguars will play the Red Hot Cardinal. They're now at a third down to seven with 56 seconds remaining. Kyler Murray up the middle of the field has a completion here and we're close to field goal range. Timeouts are starting to be called by the Jaguars. What a catch. That's of course is Jamar Chase, the one steal 
they got from the Cincinnati Bengals, and they can win this game with a field goal kick. And this is to move the Cardinals further into the top 10. They'll be into the ninth spot now. If they beat the Jaguars with a game-winning field goal, they sure do. The Cardinals finish off this game 27-24. And for the Cardinals, player steal, probably one of the most underrated players in the league right now. He is the second most tackles in the league this year. It's for Isadio Luacan at middle linebacker. And with this win, the Cardinals have able to accomplish something that no one has done yet on this map. They are the first team to control the entirety of one continent, all the way from Central America to the top of Greenland. Turn number 27, nine teams remain. We're back to the Ravens. Plenty of expansion and conquest opportunities for the Ravens, but I think they're going towards Italy. Matter of fact, they are, so we'll give them this expansion and a really solid player. And since the Bears lost a while back ago, they lost a lot of their players to the free agent pool, which just left the Ravens flock to swoop in and steal one of those players, that being Walter Payton. The Ravens are playing really strategical right now. They're just taking their time and expanding in Europe, but here are the Miami Dolphins. We haven't seen them in forever. Let's just see what they're up to. They could definitely expand as well, but I think they're going towards LA. Sure enough, the Dolphins will be traveling for the Rams, and honestly, I can't remember the last time these teams played a game. It's been a minute. Both of them fresh players up ahead for this next matchup, Dolphins and Rams. Here we go. Well, considering that it's been like 30 minutes since either of the teams have played a game of football, it kind of looks like it. This is a very low scoring game, very risky pass by Matthew Stafford, but he gets it off to Puka Nukua with the completion, but they only have 35 seconds left. They're in a little trouble here. Now, do remember the Rams had the clone power up a long time ago. They're currently also in New Zealand, so that's something to look out for. Matthew Stafford just going to launch up a bullet, and this one's caught. Hold up a second. They're going to call their final timeout at the 35-yard line. What a catch. I would assume one or two more plays for Matthew Stafford. He's just going to throw this one up to Tutu Atwell, I think, and he has a touchdown. Tutu Atwell with back-to-back -back catches, and an extra point ties it up, and we have overtime in LA. But shortly, the Rams are faced with another third down. Stafford delivers, overthrows just a little bit outside. It's going to be fourth and seven, and they're going to settle with three points. Third down and four. Can they get to the end zone? And they have it for a touchdown. That's going to walk this one off in overtime. Jalen Waddle does the waddle, and he wins this game. 20 to 17 for the Miami Dolphins. They stay alive, but the Rams, they're not eliminated just yet. They're just going to be living in New Zealand for a minute. Now, unfortunately, however, for the Rams case, they will lose their best player, that being Aaron Donald. But hey, they're still alive. That's all that matters right now. Well, this does mean that another team is knocked out of Africa, which I believe we're down to one, two, three, four teams remaining. I think we started with like nine or 10. Now, I actually think this is more of a better thing for the Rams. A reason why I say this is because now that they're in New Zealand, they get free expansions essentially because there's only one way in, one way out. But here's the Cardinals once again. It's going to be hard to get an arrow to go somewhere because the Cardinals control the entirety of North America, but let's see where this goes. Yes, I know this looks like a mess, but let me explain this. All right, so you can see we're going from the center of Cardinals logo, and I'm allowing them to attack across Alaska to Russia. So if we keep on going this way, go towards the West Coast, it's going to hit the Pacific Ocean, and if it comes on the other side, it's going to actually go through Japan. This is considered an expansion for the Cardinals. The craziest one we've ever seen, but that's an expansion. I honestly forgot the Eagles lost. There's a lot of good players in that team that could be taken from the free agent pool, including TJ Watt, the newest Arizona Cardinal. That might just be one of the most outrageous expansions we have have ever had, and now the Green Bay Packers are back. Can the Packers get an expansion here as well? Mm, it's close. Lucky for Green Bay, this was a dead shot for the country of Yemen, so that is an expansion. I think I have an idea who I'm going to give them. You know, maybe there was better acquisitions they could have got, but I couldn't have passed on this once-of-a-lifetime opportunity. Welcome back to Green Bay, Devontae Adams. It's kind of funny to say that we're on turn 28 and we're still seeing expansions. Here are the Ravens again. Who knows, will we see a third expansion in a row? I do not think so. I'm pretty sure I clarified this in the intro, but like I said, I'm allowing teams to attack over the Mediterranean Sea. I'm surprised this is the first time it's happened, but... Well, it happened, and the Ravens just so happened to be going over the Mediterranean into Africa, and this matchup is a rematch. This was a very early on matchup in this video where the Ravens took a W, and the Dolphins got brought back because of the dead rising disaster. Here we go again, Ravens, Dolphins. Well, it looks like the Ravens are still standing on business. They beat the Dolphins once. Why not do it twice? This kick in overtime to end it. It's the second possession. It's over. Ravens win 34-31. to The Dolphins, I really didn't see them making this far, considering they lost Tyree Kill super early, and they just were not doing enough to stay alive with the competitive teams. The Dolphins are out, and the Ravens continue. Yeah, this kind of worked out pretty good for the Ravens. Considering the Dolphins beat the Rams in OT, they stole Aaron Donald, and then the Ravens came right back and beat the Dolphins in OT, and they took Aaron Donald back from them. So Aaron Donald is now a Baltimore Raven. And now we have another team in Africa to add on to the fire going on in this continent. And look at this landmass, not even touching. Very weird.
better, but you know what? The Ravens will take it. And this is a look at the map with the Elite 8, final 8 teams. Turn number 29, the final 8 teams, and there are the Rams, and all they can do is expand. I mean, yeah, just look at the bottom corner of this map right here. All they can go to is Australia, because everything else is just way too far away. So this is just the freest expansion a team will ever get in Imperialism history. So congratulations to the LA Rams. This will be the freest you'll ever get a player like AJ Brown to your team. All right, so now the Rams are moving into Australia, and here's the 49ers again. And which way will the Niners be going? And probably towards the New York Giants. Yeah, this matchup was long overdue. It just hits this little blue slip, the Giants zone. I think this one should be over fast. Well, the Giants actually stuck around a longer than I thought they would, but this was the Niners game to win as they did so here. Well, I guess losing Christian McCaffrey ended up working out better than they thought because they got his replacement, Saquon Barkley. And the most important piece of land on this map now has new owners. That's Madagascar as the Niners take over. Day three of recording on turn number 30, and this is the seven final teams as we pick up with the Baltimore Ravens. Ravens are currently controlling the vast majority of Europe, and it looks like they might be going down towards Africa. Well, what a lucky error this was for Baltimore, because finally, for the first time today, we are seeing the double trouble power-up in use as they expand to Chad. Well, I'm glad to see that the Ravens are taking over the Mediterranean Sea like the Roman Empire, but now they have the double trouble power-up. We have yet to get this, so I have to explain what it does real quick. The double trouble power-up has proven to be one of the most strongest power-ups in this entire series, because it lets you steal two players per successful invasion instead of one. And of course, for the free agent acquisition, it looks like the Ravens are creating a no-fly zone as they now have Marlon Humphrey and Patrick Sertain. That still leaves four power-ups on the map as we continue with the Atlanta Falcons. The Falcons currently hold land equivalent to about 4 billion people, and they're probably going to go get some more in Europe. Well, it looks like we're seeing another expansion and another power-up. This is actually a really good power move for the Falcons. They're going to take the final bandit power-up. So as for the free agent pickup, I think it's time to start using those evolved players. We've gone through most X-Factors. That leaves us with 99 overall Patrick Scales, who has recently evolved from the Chicago Bears. So now that I look at the screen for the bandit power-up, it's crazy because there's only six teams, and the Falcons get steal two players. There's good players on every single one of these teams. The Falcons, what a turn for them. They're going to start by stealing a player from the Ravens. Yeah, and that, of course, is going to be a devastating loss to the Ravens, but Aaron Donald is now an Atlanta Falcon. And then the other team they're going to steal a player from will be the Houston Texans. And now the Falcons will get the add on Miles Garrett, which means on their defense, they have Max Crosby, Aaron Donald, and Miles Garrett. That's pretty scary. It's funny because Arthur Smith would have still gone 7-10 and 10 with this team, but here are the Green Bay Packers. The Packers will more than likely be playing the said team we're talking about, the Atlanta Falcons. It's going that way. And that's a dead shot for India, but keep in mind that both these teams have meteors, so whoever wins this game will also take control of two meteors, the plus five to the running back and the plus five to the wide receiver. Whoever wins this will be stacked. Can the Packers defense make a stand? They still have three timeouts as well, and looks like Heineke is just going to air it deep for an open receiver. Can he get the speed on? Yes, he can. That's 100%. Tyree kill for the touchdown. No doubt. You can just tell by his running speed right there, and that's going to take a touchdown lead over the Green Bay Packers. Do they go for two? They will. This is the correct call. It would make it a seven-point game. If they don't, it's going to stay at five, and the Packers would be alive. They're going to pass, and it's the most easiest slant completion you will ever see to once again Tyreek Hill, seven-point game. That completion was to Justin Jefferson. Now we have another catch. This one's going to go to Jaden Reed, the rookie, get them to the 24 with 50 seconds remaining. 35 seconds left. They do not decide to use the timeout. Jordan Love has to scramble out, and he's going to take a really bad sack here. That's going to burn a timeout and lose 13 yards in the process. Not to worry, though, because Jordan Love just delivered a mid seam strike to Jaden Reed once again. We first and goal at the seven. Love, quick pass, easy touchdown, extra point ties this one to Justin Jefferson. The Falcons start with the ball in the kickoff. Cordell Patterson's going to the house. Are you kidding me? I wasn't even expecting this. Once again, I never really watched the kickoffs, but I just suddenly turn around and I see this, and that's a touchdown. Packers have to answer back. Well, Love starting this drive from his own 19 yard line in a little bit of trouble, and it looks like Falcons will be breaking forth. Thought they would bring the blitz. They back off of it, and it looks like it does not pay out because Devontae Adams returning to the Green Bay Packers has his first down to the 38. Another third down situation for the Green Bay Packers. This time it's third and 11, and Jordan Love just barely got that one off before taking a sack. It's going to be fourth down and 11 now. They have to go for it. So this could be it for the Green Bay Packers as Jordan Love runs play action, has the protection he needs. Can he get out of this? He runs into his own lineman. He's going to run for it, and who is he throwing it to? Probably a ghost. I don't even know. And that's where this game is going to end because the Falcons will win in overtime 
35 to 28. So the best player the Falcons could get out of that was Justin Jefferson, but remember they also got one of the meteors that the Green Bay Packers owned, which was plus five to the wide receivers. I decided to be a little nice to the Atlanta Falcons. Since they already had Justin Jefferson and Tyreek Hill at 99 overalls, I decided to use that effect on Drake London, bumping him from an 82 overall to a 90 overall now. The Falcons are also loaded at the wide receiver room. The Falcons are continuing their historic run as they knock down what was supposed to be the Ottoman Empire, the Green Bay Packers, and they take control of the Middle East. I mean, who really would have believed that the Falcons, Cardinals, and Texans would make it this far? But the Niners, we haven't seen them a lot this video. They're up next. The Niners have some golden expansion opportunities. If I was them, I would take them. They're going to need to get stacked up. For sure, they're going to take that arrow. It's going to land in South Africa. That's going to give them a pretty solid player. And how about Stephon Diggs? This will definitely help the Niners offense compete with the Atlanta Falcons. Legitimately can't believe I just said that sentence, but here are the Ravens once again. Ravens have been feeding into Africa recently. Let's see if they continue on. No, they're actually going the opposite direction. And given by the rule we established in the beginning of this video, this arrow essentially just travels straight through Great Britain, straight through Iceland, right into Greenland. That's going straight for the Arizona Cardinals. So that means the Baltimore Ravens versus the Cardinals to bring it into the top five. I'm actually wrong about that claim because I completely forgot that the Arizona Cardinals Cardinals have been sitting in Greece this entire time because they got the clone power up, but maybe they have a chance to go to overtime here. It's going to be tough. What a completion right there, though. 15 ticks on the clock. Kyler Murray looks like he just wants to take an end zone shot. Nobody's even close to James Conner. That's the easiest touchdown of his career. The Cardinals are lining up to go for two. I like this. They have a second life already, and they're going to burn one of their lives. I mean, that should have been easily completed, but somehow it wasn't. I respect the decision by the Cardinals, though. I mean, they tried to take down the Ravens before it was too late. If they could have done that, they would have been pretty good in succeeding, uh, but they can't get the offsides kick because OBJ took it, and this game's going to end here. The Ravens will take control of one of the lives of the Cardinals. That's still going to cost the Cardinals their best player being TJ Watt, but they're not out of the running quite yet. The Cardinals are currently sitting in a few specks and pixels in Greece right now, and they still share board the Ravens. It's going to be hard to beat them once. We remain at six teams, but all of a sudden, the Ravens are the biggest threat, and back are the LA Rams. Remember, they can't do anything else other than expand, and I'll show you why. So as you can see, this is the exact same thing that happened last time they expanded to Australia. There is nothing anywhere close to them. I'm not counting an arrow from anywhere to Africa or North America. That's just too far of a distance, if you ask me. They're not traveling over water here. Their only opportunity to move is to expand to Indonesia, as you can see right here. I don't know why that arrow is so big. But anyways, that's an expansion, and they're going to get a free player out of it, but now they're going to finally share a border with the Atlanta Falcons. Do you guys remember that 99 overall cornerback from the Evolve power-up with a name I'm not going to pronounce, and he doesn't even have a face? Yeah, me neither, but anyways, I'm going to give him to the LA Rams. 99 overall cornerback. If you're wondering how many expansions have been in this video, there's been a total of 32. I went ahead and counted all of them. Here are the Niners. Well, the Niners have a chance to make that number 33, and I think they will do so right here. And this arrow just grazes the top of Tanzania. They dodge a bullet because this was going straight for the Saudi Arabia Peninsula against the Atlanta Falcons. I think the Niners would like a few more expansion pickups right now. And why not keep on bolstering up the Niners offense? They're gonna need it. So now they have Stephon Diggs and Devontae Adams. 33 expansions and counting and here are the Rams once again. Very important arrow spin for the LA Rams as it's going dead up north. I mean this arrow was essentially a projectile going straight for the Korean Peninsula as it's gonna hit the Atlanta Falcons. That's what it's closest to. Probably the worst outcome for the Rams here. I know they would rather have an expansion or maybe the Ravens, but now it's against the Atlanta Falcons. Looks like the LA Rams aren't playing no games. They're up by four points over the Atlanta Falcons. Taylor Heineke has to be clutch here. He needs a touchdown and he's going to deliver a dart to once again Tyree Kill, who just runs through the secondary again. How many times are we going to see this exact same thing unfold in a flip for the lead? Can they stay alive for a race for Asia or will the Falcons take control of Australia? There's a completion to everyone's favorite white boy, Cooper Cup. He gets him to the 44 Rams call their second time out one minute. For where they're spotted, it's about a 55-yard field goal. They surely want to get closer than that. They just had to burn their final timeout. So with 20 seconds left, here comes a blitz, and Stafford is just driven into the ground. That would 100% be pass or roughing the passer in today's league. That might just end the game. Looks like they're going to try to get one more playoff. I have never seen a defender come that quick at the quarterback ever in Madden. And Stafford gets the snap off. He's going to scramble out. The defense is causing him some trouble. Overthrows. Doesn't matter. Zeros on the board. The Atlanta Falcons prevail once again, and they will take control of Australia from the LA Rams. It's pretty clear that Madden doesn't want me to give the Falcons any more defensive players, so now I'm just going to keep adding some offensive players. They're going to be replacement for B. John Robinson, which is kind of crazy to say. He's a 96 overall. Here's Christian McCaffrey, 98 overall X-Factor. And 
now after this win, the Atlanta Falcons are taking down their talents to Oceania as they take control of Australia, Indonesia, and New Zealand. And now I can finally say this. We have reached the top five teams in NFL Imperialism Global Edition. The Ravens, Texans, Niners, Falcons, and Cardinals. What a group of teams. Was not expecting this at all. So to begin turn number 32, I'm just fixing a slight mistake I made. It doesn't change much, however. When the Ravens beat the Cardinals, they had the double triple power, but I only gave them one player, which was TJ Watt. Here's the second player, which is going to be Jamar Chase. The Cardinals had the collapse of the century. They're basically the new Roman Empire, and here they're going right now. They only have one expansion opportunity if they're lucky. I don't think it's going that way. Let's just see where this lands. You know, if Italy just wasn't so happened to be a shape of a boot, the Cardinals would have gotten an expansion here. We've gone to the Iberian Peninsula, which is Spain and Portugal. But nope, instead, this is another game against the Ravens. I will be praying for you guys. Well, the prayer wasn't answered, unfortunately, but I wasn't expecting anything else. The Ravens will win 31 to 17. We'll move on to the final four teams. Well, making sure I'm going to get it right this time, the Ravens have stole a total of four players from the Cardinals because they just beat the Cardinals twice and the double triple power up is still in effect. So they're going to take Buda Baker and Terry McLaurin. Two pretty solid pickups, if you ask me. You know, usually when we make the top four in an imperialism episode, I usually can just narrow out one team as the imposter. Like they just shouldn't have made it that far. But this episode, I'm looking at the four teams remaining. And honestly, I have no clue who's going to win it. It's up to the Texans, Niners, Falcons, and Ravens. They all have an equal shot. There's also eight possible expansions and three power ups still remaining. Anything can happen as we approach, I believe, turn 34. And here are the Ravens again. I still have them situated in Europe. So let's just see where it goes from here. Maybe going right down to the Niners. Well, that would have been the case if Nigeria wasn't still in claim, but you know what? The Ravens will gladly take another player. And the best possible free agent pickup will be Jalen Ramsey, adding on to the long list of superstar quarterbacks in this Ravens locker room. I cannot keep track of how many expansions the Ravens got in this video. Once again, they're getting caught on again. It seems as the Ravens are making the push to end this video as I think they're going to go towards Asia and take on the Atlanta Falcons. Yeah, I don't really need to draw an error for this one, but here's what's at stake. As you can see, the Ravens have the double triple power ups. So if they win, they steal two players. But if they win, they also steal two of the Meteors, which will add upgrades to the receiver and running back. They're top ones. Let's just see if the Ravens can do it, or maybe the Falcons can join the top three. This is a very well matched up game. Right? This is a very well matched up game right now between the Ravens and the Falcons, but it's a fourth down and five for Taylor Heineke. He's been a hero all episode. Can he get one conversion? No, he overthrows or underthrows. Really, that was just way off target. And I think the Falcons are done. I think their superhero run is over. As that is the end, the Ravens are in victory formation. They are ready to join the top three, but I cannot disrespect the Atlanta Falcons here. What a run it has been for them. And with the double triple power for the Ravens, these are the two players they'll be taking. It's no surprise Tyreek Hill has made an impact for the Atlanta Falcons. He'll probably do the same for the Baltimore Ravens. And then Aaron Donald. I mean, come on, 99 overall on defense. You can't pass on that. Oh yeah, and I can't forget to mention, since there's two meteors on this land area now, Jamar Chase just got boosted to a 99 overall. And Alvin Kamara, another 99 overall. This team has 99s everywhere. And what you're about to witness is the biggest change of landmass in imperialism history. I mean, bam, look at that. I mean, I gotta give it to the Atlanta Falcons. That was one of the most impressive runs we've ever seen in imperialism. But the Ravens, they just got hot at the right time. And here they are in the top three with the Texans and Niners remaining. Well, with three teams remaining as we head into turn number 35, the longest ever imperialism episode according to turns. Now we're going to the 49ers. The Niners are probably the worst of the three remaining on the map, but they're going to go up towards North Africa. And by doing so, they missed their slim chance of landing on Cameroon to get the afterlife power up. Instead, they have to take on the Baltimore Ravens. So congratulations to the Houston Texans for making it to the runner-up game at least. This is a very important game with two powerhouse teams between the AFC and NFC, Ravens and Niners. Looks like Ravens have a chance to have a kick return touchdown again. Are you kidding me? They're going to take the lead with this and the Niners will get the ball back it's gonna be 20 to 17 they have all three timeouts once again, I'm not expecting this to happen. The Niners decided they did not want to have a kick return touchdown, so they're starting from the 25-yard line, and what a catch we have there. Brock Party delivers to midfield to George Kittle. Still need about 10 more yards to get in range for a field goal to send this to overtime, and Party is going to get that easy completion once again. That's going to put him to the 27, this one to Stephon Diggs. The Ravens' defense did come up clutch, though. They forced a stop at the 8-yard line, so we're actually going to send this one to overtime. This would lead to a third down and seven, and it almost seems like you have to convert this. You don't want to get the ball back to the Ravens 
Ravens offense. Here comes a blitz and a pass batted out to Debo Samuel, intended for Debo Samuel, Patrick Sertan with the defense, and they're going to punt the ball. Prematurely punt, if I'd say so myself, because the Ravens will take over with decent field positioning, and all they need is three points. Here's a return as well as we get to the 45-yard line and some more. This is where Lamar Jackson takes over. Niners going to stop here. They probably get the ball back. This is too long of a field goal, but they're playing way too soft coverage on Tyree Kill, and this is going to end the game, and the Ravens will move on to the final game to play the Houston Texans as they take control of most of Africa. We've seen this common theme with Tyree Kill this entire video. He has been the MVP, no doubt, of this entire video. There he goes to the house again. It's a touchdown. Game winner. Ravens win an OT. And the final player acquisitions of this video are probably the best ones we've seen. It's going to be Micah Parsons and Nick Bosa because of the double triple power up. The Ravens are going to be tough to beat. The Ravens are so close. They can almost feel it, but they just have one more roadblock ahead of them. It's just going to be what's remaining in Africa and South America. Now for convenience purposes, I went ahead and filled up all empty territories in the map, which means we have no more expansions. This is just because we have been sitting here probably for an extra 15 minutes and this video is long enough we need to see who's going to win this it's either going to be the texans or ravens no expansions left whatever the wheel lands on is a team that will be attacking and will be on the road so here we go the final turn turn number 36 who will be on the road and attacking the houston texans as if it wasn't difficult enough we'll take one more peek at the map before we see one team fill this entire world in one color will it be the texans or ravens final game Let's go. Let me try to name just a few defensive players. We have Patrick Sertan, Jalen Ramsey, TJ Watt, Micah Parsons, Nick Bosa, Aaron Donald, just to name a few. And here is a completion to Travis Kelsey. I named all those defensive players are there, but he got past all of them. First and 10 to the 39. Can the rookie quarterback pull off the unthinkable? Here comes a blitz. It's a fumble picked up by the Ravens and one first down in this game. Probably one of the greatest defenses ever assembled in imperialism history. And now they're just one first down away from winning this episode, taking control of the entire world. And the Texans are forced to start burning timeouts. And the Texans cannot stop the clock no further. So the Ravens did not just take control of the United States of America. They just took control of the entire damn world. And after a total of 36 turns and about 20 hours of recording, it's time to do the most satisfying part of imperialism, filling in the map with one winner. Well, there you have it. The Baltimore Ravens have finally done it. After many and many episodes of constant struggles and things not going their way, it just took the entire map, the entire world, for things to go their way as they take control of every single corner of this earth. Shout out to a lot of teams in this video, though. I'm talking about the Cardinals, the Bears, and more specifically the Texans. They had also really good runs. I can't even forget about the Falcons, too. All of those teams are very unexpected. That's what made this series so good. But now it's time to reveal which one of you guys guessed it right and then we'll go into the final leaderboards the imperialism leaderboards to end this video okay so normally when i get to this part of the video i can just read the comments and it's usually just like seven or eight of you guys but nope at this time we have 51 total correct guesses in my community page i mean there was 600 total comments which leaves about 8.3 percent of you guys who got it right now i'm not going to go through every single comment put on the screen that's just a little too much of me so right here you can see all 51 names who said the ravens in that comment section right here thank you everyone for commenting all you guys got it right. Okay, now it's time for one of my favorite parts of imperialism, and that's going over the leaderboards. As you guys know, I do this at the end of every single episode where I take control of all the stats, including turns lasted, wins, losses, expansions, and an imperialism win, and I put them together to put leaderboards for all 32 total teams. So you saw this in the intro of the video. This is how it works. As you can see, turns lasted one point, wins 10 points, loss subtracts 10, expansions are now worth five points, and an imperialism win is 50 points. But you're also going to see something new, including trending spots, how much they dropped, how much they jumped, or if they stayed the same. That's going to be indicated by these symbols right here. So let's start with the very bottom, the worst teams in imperialism, 32 through 25. And I have to say anything about these teams. Honestly, these are just the unlucky teams. It's not like these teams are really bad in real life. It's just they've been really unlucky in imperialism. I mean, look at this. Look at their expansions. Not really high at all. Those come down importance because those give you power-ups other than the Minnesota Vikings who have seven of them. But yeah, you can see the Vikings dropped eight spots and then the Colts still at 32. They're just really far out of the mix. Browns probably shouldn't be this low and then Steelers. It's just a lot of good teams, just very unlucky. But as we approach 24 to 17, we have a lot of changes going up and down. Remember I said some teams did really good this episode, including the 
Bears and Cardinals, and you can see they both went up six and four spots, respectively. Very surprised to see the Eagles this slow at 18 with a 9-9-5 and five record. And now we go into the Super 16, the top 16 teams. Remember, the Atlanta Falcons had a really good episode. It's all about historic runs and imperialism, and you can see the Falcons jumped 10 total spots, and now they're at 9-8-3 record. And can't forget about the Houston Texans, who came in second. They jumped eight spots. They're currently at 14, but what I'm really surprised here is the Bills and Chiefs. You would think these teams would be in the top eight, but these teams have not won an imperialism episode yet. But finally, since I changed expansions to be worth five points instead of 10, the Denver Broncos dropped out of the top eight, and you can see they actually dropped pretty far. Six total spots. They were in the top three last episode, and that's because expansions were 10 points. If that was the case, expansions would have been 150 points, but now since they have 15 of them, it's only 75, so they lost a lot of value with that change. But now we can look at the top eight teams, and all these teams have won an imperialism episode starting with the Chargers, then the Bengals, Dolphins, Raiders, and then the Packers. You can see they jumped three spots, but the Ravens who just won this episode, look at the jump they did. They jumped 11 total spots. That is the biggest jump in this video and respectively so. I mean, they went on seven wins, four expansions, and look at the gap between third and fourth place, but the gap between first and second, much different story. The Niners have 430 imperialism points to the Niners 336. Now, the Niners did close the gap a little bit, but it's going to be a little bit before we see that gap any get any smaller. The Niners are still super far behind the Cowboys. Cowboys, 1989 record, 225 turns lasted. They're still the number one team in imperialism history. So thank you guys for watching Imperialism Worldwide Edition. This was a completely ambitious project that took over 30 hours of work, so I'd really appreciate you guys' support in the comments and the like button down below. Thank you guys for watching Imperialism 9, and I'll see you guys next time.